Good afternoon, folks. This is Kimberly Jesse reporting in live from Los Angeles, California on the pink carpet with Michael Green, editor and publisher of the and television host for the High Profile Man magazine. So he's their talk show host and um, he is here today um, to share with us uh, his journey and how he got to where he is now and uh, he's, you know, formerly worked in, in corporate America and uh, lived a high, you know, had a high profile life and was a high, had a high, high profile position. So and, and, and now he's uh, helping high profile men. So, Michael, welcome to the pink carpet. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Great to be here. Thank you. Thank you. And and I, I applaud you. Kudos to you for being the new talk show host, one of the talk show hosts for the High Profile Man magazine. Thank you. It's, it really is quite exciting. Good. Yeah. Good. So tell us, Michael, you were your former corporate America. Tell us what that was like for you. Well, the situation for me was uh, a very interesting one because I had uh, come out of college and I had a lot of uh, conditioning as a child. And conditioning as a child uh, can be good or bad, uh, beautiful or ugly, and um, it's usually about people getting what they need to get, uh, but sometimes it's what happens to children is they get what they don't need, and they don't get what they need. Mm. So it can be a, almost a triple-edged sword there. Unfortunately, there was a lot of things that I needed that I never got. And that foreshadowed a lot of how my uh, psyche developed and how the things that I did following my childhood evolved. And I found myself in corporate life after about five or six years of being in the workplace in various uh, administrative and uh, community-based uh, uh, organizations. And I found myself working for uh, three executives who were extremely brilliant. Uh, had degrees in law and finance, but had, with all due respect, very little people skills and were really very one-sided and they were, again, as most high-profile men are, very much what they did and not who they were. And we all became in individuals within the organization who had to be who we did mm. instead of who we were mm. because we had specific things to do. Um, there's a lot of objectification that happens in these organizations, uh, especially the big ones, when people are identified for what they do, and it doesn't matter that they may be brilliant in other areas of their life, they are only seen in one way. And that's what occurred to me. And I had my job to do, and I did my job well, um, and it was rewarded from the corporate perspective but there was always more out there available, but was never filtered down to my level. And my big driving force in my life at that point in time was making sure that my family was okay. So I took the yelling and the screaming and the, and the um, putting down, which went, it was quite a bit during my uh, tenure with this corporation, uh, because I knew I needed to generate the money and have a family, the kids were moving toward college, etc., etc., and I had a responsibility. Uh, after I was early retired from the company, basically I looked around and, f and f saw the reality of what I was in, and what I was in was a big hole because. I had not been trained as a consultant, for example, or an individual who had their own business. The corporate life is totally different. Everyone, as long as they can stay you know, uh, productive and stay useful to the company, they get their paycheck every two weeks. Mm -hmm. When you're out, you're out. There's no one that's going to pay you every two weeks unless you earn it and go out and try to uh, generate the money. At the same time, I found that I had a major backlash in terms of always thinking and my mind was dwelling on all the negative things that occurred in my personal life as well as in my business life. My personal life when I was a child and forward and in the business circles. And I became very depressed. Uh, they, at the time I was laid off, 
the kinds of work I did was basically non-existent anymore. And I became very depressed and learned that I had PTSD, which no one would ever recognize. So, you're, so you had corporate PTSD, basically? Yes. And that's yes. something that I never hear people talk about, and I would love to talk more about that when we interview you again, because I know that this is a series. Great. I'll be happy to talk to you about that. Well, thank you so much, Michael, for sharing your story and being so transparent. Because, again, we go back to saying that men are basically taught to not share their feelings because it's all woozy or whatever. But at the end of the day, by living that way, families are destroyed, lives are destroyed, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, you offer services that can really help men be who they are and not be what they do and heal from that from a, uh, a corporate feel, so to speak, because mm -hmm. you get to the bottom line, and in corporate America, it's all about the bottom line. So yes. you get to the bottom line quickly with the technique that you offer. And in our next interview, we'll go more into detail about the technique. So thank you so much for being on the pink carpet with us today. And we look forward to talking to you soon, because this looks like this is going to be a documentary series. I love this. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Thank you, Michael. Have a great day. Thank you. You too.